Hi, everyone. Welcome to April at the Yon Planetarium at Penn State Barron. This month, we're going to talk about the Mars helicopter. We saw the Mars rover, but now we have the Mars helicopter, which was attached to the Mars rover. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. And then, of course, we will talk about the night sky. So let's get right into our Mars helicopter. I have a diagram here that shows some of the important parts to it. We have two carbon fiber rotors, and we have four carbon fiber legs, very light, very strong. There is an antenna, so it can talk to uh, and send information back to Earth and the other orbiters that we currently have going around Mars. We have uh, the batteries that need to recharge. So there is a solar panel on the top. There are cameras on the bottom so that we can take pictures as this thing is flying over the surface of Mars looking down, it will be able to take pictures. Now, if we uh, look at another image here, this shows what the helicopter may do. To start off with, the helicopter will probably just go up and hover, take a few pictures, and then come back down just to test things out. But eventually, as you can see here, the helicopter will fly downrange just a little bit from the landing area and take pictures and temperature readings, et cetera and then come back down again, or it may actually land in another spot and then take off again and land in another spot after that and maybe check out some areas a little further away from the rover. Well, let's get into our night sky with our planetarium program. Again, this is April, so we are about ready for the sun to set. If we look in our Western sky, I have the time set to about 7.45 p.m. The sun goes down around five to eight, or we can just say eight o'clock. Let's go a little further. And what I would like to do is turn off the glow of the sun so we can see what planets are visible, uh, or at least in this location. They may not all be visible because they're too close to the horizon, too close to the glow of the sun. So we have Venus down here, Uranus, but Mars will definitely be visible. And Mars, uh, as we get later into the night and make it darker, Mars is located in that winter circle that we've talked about before. So let's get our sky to darken here. It seems to kind of keep going back. Here we have our winter circle, which contains the Gemini twins, Canis Major, Orion, Taurus the bull. So we've talked about all those before. And there we have Mars. But what I'd like to do is zoom in to take a closer look at the moon. If you like looking at the moon, maybe you want to get some pictures of the moon, this is your chance. The moon is uh, in a small crescent phase right now. And this is one of the best times to look at the moon when it's either a crescent or a quarter moon. A lot of people call it half moon. At that time, um, if you look right along the terminator where the dark meets the light, in that area there is where you will be able to see the, the best relief. So you'll see the mountains, the craters, the hills, the valleys a little bit better. So you don't want to go out on a full moon if you want to see those craters the best. Right now might be the time. Let's move to the northern sky. We're always trying to keep track of where the Big Dipper is. And right now, the Big Dipper is up very high. This is only about 9.30 at night. Big Dipper is up very high in the sky. And uh, as you can see, the Little Dipper is down lower underneath the Big Dipper. Here we have Polaris, our North Star. Now let's go all the way around to the southern sky. And in the south, we have one of more, our more famous constellations. And this is a famous spring constellation known as Leo the Lion. So there we have Leo. But the, the best part of Leo that you'll see in the night sky, the easiest part, will be this right here. This looks like a backwards question mark, or it's also called the sickle of Leo. And a sickle, if you know what that is, is a blade with a handle. So this round part would be the blade, has a curved blade on it and a straight handle. It's used for cutting down grass and weeds, things like that. So that is Leo the lion. 
Now, if we move around to the eastern sky, we'll see what planets are ready to come up in the early morning hours before the sun rises. There we have Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, and we have another one that well, there's Neptune, one more, but it's very close to where the sun is. So we're going to lose those now with the glow of the sun. But what I would like to do is turn off the glow. And there we see it, Mercury. Just to let you know where it's at, but you're not going to be able to see it. It's too close to the sun's location in our sky. So what does this mean? This means basically for most people, you'll want to just look for Saturn and Jupiter. Now, if I go back just a little bit, let's just get a time that might be nice to look at these planets. Well, five in the morning, they're both up, but Jupiter may be a little low over the trees, so uh, unless you have a clear area. So if we go to 515, we're starting to see some glow of the sun, but Jupiter and Saturn are up just a little bit higher. So with that, I hope you get a chance to learn a little bit about the Mars rover and the Mars helicopter. You can go to nasa.gov to check those out. And once again, thank you for joining us here at the Yon Planetarium at Penn State Behrend.